sometimes somebody is misunderstanding the measure. And sometimes it's something as simple as I like got the numbers backwards or I read the instructions wrong. I feel like one of the things that comes up all the time is um, we're checking item nine on a PHQ nine, which is the suicide question. And somebody has answered that in the positive and you check in on it. And they're like, no, no, I haven't been thinking about suicide in the last two weeks. And then you clarify that the instructions we're asking about two weeks, not, you know, all of somebody's life. So we often will encounter situations where um, there's just a simple misunderstanding. This was a really great example. I love the way that you played that, Amber, because it was a misunderstanding, but it was actually still revealing some clinically relevant information that we could then jump into a session and spend more time on. So um, that was also like just a really nice extra bonus for that one. And I know that sometimes people worry a little bit about, again, as Amber said earlier, kind of being confrontational or pointing out a mistake, but that's okay. You know, we're very collaborative. We're really just inviting this open conversation. And I just wanted to be able to model that it's absolutely okay to be able to um, do this with clients and, and sort of point out what these items mean. And what I think is important about this is we often talk about measurement-based care as helping us develop a shared language. And that's what we're doing here. We are clarifying our shared language. Um, I'm sharing a little bit about what this item means from my standpoint as the clinician, and Amber's telling me a little bit more about what this item means for her as the client. So now we both have a stronger sense of what we're talking about when we are looking at that question moving forward. And this is really strengthening our therapeutic alliance. We all know what we're working on and we know why, and we know what we're talking about from moment to moment.